In this presentation, Rob and I would like to show you some of the specific examples of weapons, equipment, and vehicles that our art team have developed for Sog Prairie Fire. These assets are based directly on advice and references from our outstanding MACV Sog advisor team. Hope you enjoy. So Gordon Denniston was Croc 3 with the 119th Assault Helicopter Company in Vietnam. He's a good friend of Tilt Myers. And Gordon basically sent us quite a few photos um, and reference pictures that we could use when designing our Huey fleet. So uh, we wanted to get as many details as we could right. You know, the interior of the cabin, um, the, the cockpit, uh, the, the way the dials were, the, 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 even things like the... Uh, the ham and lima beans on the uh, on the side of the M60 to help with the belt feeding in. You know, he was great. Uh, he told us quite a few of his stories. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it was just really a privilege to have somebody that was a pilot of one of these helicopters uh, having a look at what we were doing and giving us some input. Uh, let's jump into the next one, Jim's Sog Gear. Yeah, you can see Jim's shoulder pockets, uh, which mm -hmm. he's had sewn on to the to, to the arms of his uh, of his combat jacket. In SOG, I had a regular uniform that was sterile, and I took the bottom pockets off your you know the regular jungle greens. I took the bottom pockets off; they were big pockets. I put them on the chest, and I took the chest pockets, which were small, and I put them on my sleeves. And there was no pockets from the bottom down. And what I did is I tucked that in my pants, and then I took a cravat and ran it through the belt loops and I tied that tight. And then I put another cravat around my head to hide my red hair. Um, then we would paint the uniforms with black paint. We just paint to break up the, the, the color a little bit and just broke it up. And that's pretty much the uniform, no metal on the uniform. And I didn't wear anything that had metal. Uh, on the clips and everything that were metal on our body, um, I taped them all with black tape. And then uh, um, my, uh, on my canteens, I didn't use any metal canteens. They were plastic. And what you do is you take one canteen and cut the top off, and you put that in the bottom of the other canteen. So now you've got a cup and a canteen in it. You could do that. The, I love the second picture, which, you know, you can see the sort of fatigue in his eyes in, in that picture. He's still got a light in there. He's still, he's still awake and, yeah. and alert, but you can tell that he's, he's been out for a while in that, in that yep. picture. And he's completely loaded down with his SOG gear. Uh, and, and it gave us that sense of everything's sweaty, everything's muddy, everything's uh, been sprayed and uh, you know to make it more camo and less less sort of orthodox there's nothing there's nothing about any sog guy going over the fence that looks normal jim also sent us these pictures um, of uh, you know some of weapons and told us quite a bit in in emails and then in voice as we got to know him oh, yeah. uh, about the weapons that he used um, and then for a weapon i carried the car 15 now, a couple of times in SOG, when I was a B-53, I carried a Swedish K. And one time I carried a, um, an Uzi. But the Uzi had a silencer, you know. And uh, the silencer is like twice the size of the friggin' weapon. Prisoner Snatch, we used a high standard, 22 high standard, with a, um, with a silencer on it. Because you don't want to kill the guy. But what you do is you, you take a good shot and you hit him in the gut where it's gonna fold him over and he's gonna be in a lot of pain. And then as soon as you hit him, you know, you're know you gonna go ahead and take that guy out. You're gonna get him out there on ropes, even if you have to set him off by himself, but you're gonna get that guy out of there. And um, then they'll, they'll go ahead and patch him up. So you gotta be careful you don't hit him in a vital area. Uh, so, so, so one picture we have here um, from Jim, is an early black and white picture of him uh, when I think, he was in the Navy and oh, it may have been, it may have, yeah, I think it was in the Navy, this picture. This is him sitting in a, in an early war U S Marine Corps, um, CH 34. Yeah. Oh no, it's a seahorse. Cause it wasn't the, uh, the Choctaw was the army name. Yeah. Him. I guess it would have been a seahorse then. Yeah. You can so see the two M60s. Yeah. It's got the window M60 as well as the door M60. And that's what we put in the, in the game. You know, yep. we basically designed this early model uh, based on uh, Jim's photo. N next folder um, is Joe Driscoll's um, Scarface Cobra folder. And uh, if, 
few pictures in here of um, which which Joe Driscoll kindly sent us of his Cobra that he served with in Vietnam uh, on Operation Tailwind, which was a legendary hatchet force mission, which is in Sol Chronicles by John Strykermeyer. Um, HML 367 Scarface and uh, Joe's uh, call sign, I think, was Scarface 43. And uh, basically, he was very, very helpful with us uh, when talking about the Cobra, finding the manual for us, um, yeah. asking, answering questions about some of the design elements. So one, one small feature on there was the, the, um, the, revert, the, the, the rear stabilizing fins on the side of the tail boom. Yeah. And um, I was asking him all about how they worked so that I could animate them on the helicopter to match uh, the right, you know, they would, they would, so they would tilt in the right direction at the right time when you're diving or, or you know, speeding along above the trees. Um, and that was useful. We, in the manual, it said that there was a smoke grenade dispenser at the, you know, mounted in the cockpit. Um, and he said they'd never had that. It was never there in Vietnam. So we, hmm. we, we didn't include that feature in our, in our Cobras. Um, and then the weapon systems and the interior of the cockpit. So when we came to design the NVA equipment, um, you know, you can go and look on the web and you can see pictures of NVA guys uh, marching in groups and things. And, you know, but you don't really see what they're wearing out on patrol and, and in the forest. Um, what Ken was able to do was because because as part of his mission with SOG, uh, they, they'd been collecting uh, enemy equipment and bringing it back for analysis, uh, you know, in the VCMBA clothing and equipment change documents that were, you know, um, put together and supplied to special forces teams from the combined material exploitation center. And um, these things are rare as hen's teeth because uh, a lot of the SOG documents got destroyed and, yeah. uh, you know, um, some of these things did make it back through special forces channels um, and, and, you know, eventually were lodged with the uh, special warfare school. And what Ken also has is a huge collection of bring back equipment that he, he kept. So you can see we've got the, uh, the MVA boots, uh, you know, VC uh, webbing and belts, um, NVA hats and helmets. A lot of this gear is actually directly in the game, um, mm -hmm. including uh, the entrenching tool, um, the NVA backpack, um, the VC shirt, the, the cap badges, uh, the belt buckles, um, even the belt yeah. material, the you know the um, the, the pistol holster, um, the water bottle, and uh, the chest pouch, and um, the and the uniforms. So. Pretty much every every bit of gear you see on the MVA and VC uh, relates back to authentic pictures that were you know of equipment that was actually brought off the battlefield. Uh, Ken Bore also sent us um, some amazing photographs and resources for making the equipment of the SOG soldiers. So we needed to, in the game format, make a vest, which is your load bearing equipment, um, a backpack, hat, headgear, and um, uh, accessory, which is usually um, you know, a gas mask or a, or a scarf, um, and the uniform with boots and gloves. And what, what, what we got from Ken was some amazing materials, original photographs of his of his across the fence gear, including his AK chest rig, uh, his spray mm. camo shirt with arm pockets, a spray camo boonie hat, uh, all the original gear that he actually wore in on, on operations with his RT. Um, he also still had his Stabo rig, um, and he sent us many detailed pictures of that. He had his he had his uh, um, CISO uh, backpack, which the SOG guys carried, which was sterile, and he kindly packed it full of, uh, you know, um, items or clothing or something to make it pad out so we could see how the pockets were shaped when it was full. We've got his uh, Pentac Penny, um, Olympus, sorry, Penny camera, um, the URC-10 emergency radio, um, his Browning High Power and his um, 
custom uh, holster that he had made for that um, in country. Yeah. Um, and then his wrist compass, which kind of blew the minds of the modern forces guys we had also advising us that, that these guys are a living history group who have been collecting SOG equipment for decades. And they'd never seen this compass. They didn't know it existed or was used by SOG. So uh, they were absolutely ecstatic to find out about it. And uh, uh, they've since had them made by, by Silver um, and, and supplied to them for their, for their demonstrations and their living history work. Yeah, we have his recon helmet as well. So his, his CISO uh, manufactured pith helmet, which was a yep. fake NVA helmet with recon written on the back so he doesn't get wasted by his own team. Uh, this is my old issue NVA helmet, but uh, spray painted black. But this is what the counterinsurgency support office, some of the kit they did and some of the really good stuff. Uh, amazing what they turned out, you know, from the indigenous uh, equipment to the stuff they used to issue us. And, uh, but I wanted to show that to, to Rob early on, so I'll share that with you guys. And then uh, his actual jungle boots that he wore over there, which were in quite a state. Um, so um, yeah, we, you know, we were really, really um, grateful to get all these pictures of his gear and uh and then to produce them put them in game and, and to see his reaction when when he when discovering them so right. on to ken's weapons yep <clears throat> so basically um what we have is ken's actual um fn or browning high power uh which he was um issued um and i think yeah he had a custom sight mounted on it which which he preferred to the to the normal sites. He was very kindly took loads of photographs of it from all directions, and then we uh, recreated it in the game exactly as it is. Um, obviously, sterilised the number off of it, uh, but we kept the sites that he'd added. And then you've got his car fifteen on the range at Fob One, uh, lying there on the sandbags. And notice all those thirty round mags that the early tour sub guys would be um highly envious of you can tell how late in the war this is it's sort of yeah. 1970 71. True. so we also have um a picture of ken uh quite a famous picture in in the sort of vietnam in war enthusiasts or historians world um uh, it's ken with the uh with the rpd sawn off uh, RPD was for one mission that I carried, and I thanked, thank Eldon Bargewell because I got it from Eldon. Um, cut off RPD that had the bipod cut off, the barrel was cut off up front. I carried the 100 uh, round drums in a uh, US two quart canteen cover, which is a, a bigger bladder type canteen carrier, and would have four drums on my belt. I'd take off took off my car 15 magazines and I'd have a hundred round drums, spare drum in my rucksack and then spread out to other team members. And uh, it put out a very heavy volume of fire. Uh, again, contacts were very, very close. So this was exceptional. It was, I think more streamlined than an M60 and uh, it was an excellent weapon. Ken's picture with him with the um, car 15 is quite interesting because it shows the use of the, the sling um, being a piece of cloth that's basically tied around the front sight um, uh, support and um, around the back, the butt of the weapon. Um, and then, you know, the way the Stabo rig is being used as part of the webbing and the load bearing equipment and, and the way everything's strapped onto it. So we obviously recreated that in game as, as is. What we're also seeing there is, is some of the Chicom grenade bringbacks, and basically uh, Ken was quite keen that we included these types of grenades because he said that he'd seen quite a few of them. John basically sent us quite a few pictures again from his SOG photo history book, and uh, these were you know a collection that he had of uh, trucks and aircraft um, operating around the Ho Chi Minh Trail. So we have the the bike porters and the uh, bulldozers uh, repairing the trails. Uh, we have the river ford um, with the trucks going across, uh, you know, and it's, it's this kind of idea of hidden bridges that you can't see from the air. 
they'd have a bridge under the water by making, oh, yeah. making by making a ford out of stones uh which which you wouldn't spot what this helped us to do was to to, to, to uh, design the trucks for the mva uh, which what sort of trucks they're going to be which model um you know in this case i think it's a zil 157 i think um and then you know also the uh, the bamboo shields they have on the on the on the top of the uh, truck which various people have said is you know is for put is for shielding them from thermal you know cameras and things looking for the engines but i think the general consensus from our vietnamese advisors is that these were just to add foliage to so that they would conceal the truck when parked the king bee the actual king bee on the ground you know being used um that's a great picture and then there's a picture of the team by the king bee um with rt illinois so john plaster sent us some photos some of these other ones um i think they were collected for his his photo um what's it called the photo history of sog uh, yeah. the book he put together and he collected photos from quite a few guys so you've got john st martin in his web gear with the um with the pipe bomb he's got wrapped around his his neck um that sort of tubular thing um and that's that's basically made up of um um exp- i think it's deck cord and uh, washers and all kinds of things that will cause fragmentation and, and they used to lie that along a trail as part of an ambush when they were doing a prisoner snatch. Oh, yeah. And so, and he's got his Claymore bag on his front of his chest and the, the way he's, he's webbing is and everything. We created exactly that gear in game. You can, you know, you can compare the in game to the, to the photograph. The, the guy with the foregrip is Bobby Pruitt. Um, and, and that, that's a, um, a special, uh, specially adapted SKS um, rifleman's uh, chest harness, which he adjusted so that he could put his 30 round um, uh, Car 15 magazines into it. And wow. we've created that. And you can see that in our, in our vest in game that we've actually recreated that special vest that Bobby had. Um, as, along with the Erdl uh, uniform, as uh, you know, uh, that, that some sub guys would have had later in the war. <clears throat> you also have um, pictures from John um, of the team dressed as MVA soldiers. So, so you know, the MVA gear they had um, to, to sort of buy them some time uh, on the, uh, you know, getting into contact. And mm. uh, we recreated some of that. So some of the sub guys are, are wearing. AK chest harnesses and um, the NVA uh, pith helmet. Really early on in the in the in the project, John Plaster um, sent us quite a few photos again from his SOG photo history book collection um, of um, pictures of weapons that were used by SOG um, or encountered by SOG in in Vietnam. So we've got the B forty rocket, um, which you know we recreated in game. Uh, we've got Eldon Bargewell's sawn off M79. Oh, yeah. uh, which we, re- we recreated that in game. We, we have the um, the Swedish K, uh, which I know John carried on one mission, and then because it wasn't putting people down well enough, uh, and he's had to keep shooting them twice. He, he switched to a Car 15 for all future missions. Oh yeah. Um, the M40 mini frag, the little golf ball grenade. Um, and then uh, he was helping us with uh, with other pictures. So we've got the the fifty one cal um, Dushkum. We've got the sawn off RPD, and that's actually Frank Greco in the black SOG outfit um, with the sawn off. And then the um, the rifle rack. So so John sent us this picture of a of a SOG rifle rack with the um, with an M two carbine, the Car fifteen. Oh, and a B forty one right on there too. And then you've got the the RPD sawn off, the M seventy nine, and a Type fifty six. So uh, we actually rebuilt that rifle rack in game, as well as all the weapons. Yep. Um, and then you have his uh, high standard twenty two cal um, suppressed pistol, and then also in the suppressed, we've got the, the Sten Mark two. Um, although that looks like a Mark One, but I think it was the Mark Two that we put in game. Oh no, that is a Mark Two. Yeah, no, I think we've got 
I think we've got a Mark One, but so um, yeah, we also have the Sog banana knife, um, which I think was called a Bolo, um, and we we modelled that, and uh, the uh, it was kind of like a, a, a more indigenous version of the machete, and a bit of a heavier blade, and uh, used for pretty much everything in, in survival. So we've got the toe popper mine, uh, which John sent us a picture of, and obviously we use those a lot in our campaign, uh, placing those on the trail to, to deal with trackers. And then uh, the Wellwood pistol, which was originally used by OSS and you know the Jedra teams, and then and then uh, brought into Vietnam and used by SOG. And then the last thing we have here is the. Um, the linear anti-personnel mine XM37. Well, that that's basically the um, what you saw John St. Martin wearing around yeah. wrapped around his body. In Tilt's weapons folder here, we've got um, just a couple of samples of things he sent us. And the first one is um, RT Idaho at Fob Six uh, at Ho Nok Tau. Um, I hope I pronounced that right. And uh, you can see them all with the Car 15s, the M72 Law. Um, and just the web gear, really, uh, the way that all the gears set up for their war gear um, and different different camo, different hats. Everyone's looking slightly different, like you say, band of pirates. Then we've got the the, the legends themselves, uh, Lynn Black Jr. and and uh, Tilt Meyer, sporting their Car 15s, and uh, Lynn or Blackjack is basically got his XM148 40 mil grenade launcher, which yeah. you know, it was a pretty rare weapon, um, in, even in SOG, uh, but we included it and we also included the M16 variant, which you see people using um, occasionally as well. You can see the difference with the webbing belts here is that Tilt's wearing a bar, what looks like a bar belt with, with a bar, bar um, pouches, which he's got full of, full of, no doubt, full of those tiny little uh, 20 round uh, car 15 mags, which will probably only have 18 rounds in each. And he's probably got four or five of them in each pouch. And then when you look at uh, Blackjack's hips, you can see he's using um, um, the uh, canteen pouches. Well, that, that brings us to the end of our um, excursion through some of the photos. And that was only a very small fraction of the photographs we've been sent by, by the military advisors on the project. And uh, was uh, really cool to work with, you know, um, yeah. because every question we asked, they had the answer. Um, there was a lot of uh, banter and rapport <laughs> going on, like throughout the whole project. And then when we'd show them something that we created based on something they'd sent us, they'd always be so delighted uh, to see the end result and to see that we'd listened and, and taken action on the things that they'd sent us uh, to include it. So um, I'm, uh, I'm really happy with what the team produced, what the artists produced at the end of the day. Um, and what we've managed to put out in the game is probably the most historically accurate um, representation of Mac V. Sog that's ever been put on camera or in a video game.